Hello, welcome, my name is Prue, or Prue LaRue. Sorry, you got a hair on you. <laughs> so today I really wanted to do a bit of a chatty get ready with me, but I'm going to start talking about my trip and the places that I went while we went overseas. I thought it'd be fun to split this up into probably four different videos. Uh, so we first started off in Dubai, then we went to London, Berlin, Amsterdam. So I'll try and make four different videos if you guys like this sort of style of talking about it. But for me, it's quite easy for me to talk about Dubai, uh, which is in the UAE. I've been there three times now. I did see my beautiful friend Annette's Makeup Corner do her collab with Melissa Gold, where they did eye looks inspired on the places they've been, and they talked about three different places. I really loved that video. I definitely recommend you should go check it out. I thought this would be fun to mix it up a little bit, and I've just been putting this off. One of the things that I've been putting it off for is because I wanted to use makeup that I bought in the places that I went, and I, I kind of keep forgetting, and then I just don't really want to do it. I don't know. So we're going to start off. So Dubai is somewhere that I never buy makeup because it's more expensive there than it is everywhere. I do love going to the Sephora though because it's huge and so busy, but it's not, I don't know, it's a strange place. I'm going to list the products I use down below. You might just see me pop them up like this so that I can list them, but I'm not going to talk about them as much. And I thought it'd be fun to pull out my sugar pill shadows because I just don't really know where I'm going to fit them into a video anytime soon. And I really want to play with them. So, yeah, Dubai is a strange place. I mean, we can start by talking about but you know, like, here you can get stuff sent to you via the post office. They don't have post offices there. Well, not in the same sense that we have them. They don't have mailboxes, and it's really hard to get stuff sent to your door. You actually have to, like, usually rent a post office box for a business and send it to that. <laughs> I know this because my lovely sister, Kate, lives in Dubai. <laughs> I have tried sending her stuff before. It's gotten lost. The last time I sent her something, it took three times till it reached her and it was because she was living in these three different towers and I'd labeled it wrong we finally got it there um, and that's one of the main reasons that I've been there so many times she is a makeup artist and she now owns a hair salon there that's called that hair though I really just enjoy watching their Instagram because it's really pretty and I've been in the salon and it looks amazing she's done such a good job and she's really come a long way from anything I ever thought that she would I mean it sounds bad but when your younger sister moves over to Dubai the first thing you don't think is, oh, she's going to succeed. <laughs> but I mean, I always try and be really supportive. I know how hard it is when some people tell you that you can't do something. I would hate to be that person for someone who didn't tell, who didn't make you feel supported because I think anyone should be able to try and do whatever they want. And my sister has really succeeded. And I, I probably use her as like an example when I'm talking to people and they don't know what they're going to do with their lives. And I'm like, dude, you can do anything. You can be anything. You can move wherever you want. I also use my dad as an example. Sorry, I've gone off track. But um, my dad actually went back and when he was 50, went back to university and graduated with his master's in engineering. So for me, I've been surrounded by a lot of people who have just shown me that you, you can do whatever you put your mind to and you don't have to feel trapped in whatever you're doing. Though if I'm honest, I feel a bit trapped myself I just um nursing is a hard gig uh if you don't know uh I'm a registered nurse I think it's like all over my channel <laughs> anyway but I am a registered nurse and that is um a story for another day and I'm so sorry for to divert but this is a chatty get rid of me but let's go talk a bit about Dubai and when I recommend is the best time, like, well, I actually don't have a recommendation when to go. If you're going to go, though, do try and avoid going du during Ramadan. Ramadan is a Muslim holiday that lasts for a month. If you go to Dubai during there expecting, like, a crazy fun time, it it's not going to be like that. There's just a lot of extra rules. But if you are going to go to Dubai, if you don't know anyone in Dubai, I really don't recommend uh, going there for a long time. It's fun. Don't get me wrong. If you're not made of money it's not going to be as much fun because it's an extra so expensive and when I have talked to people about what I recommend to do in Dubai it's if you've got a layover there and you just want a break to stay there for two or three nights and go check out some key sites which I'm going to talk about now and I'll pop up some pictures from my trip so you can check out what we do what I've done uh, so I've been there three times so the first trip I went after a bad breakup and like we did some partying <laughs> um, there is a thing in Dubai called brunch. I don't know. It does pop up here in Australia every now and again where you pay like a certain amount and you get unlimited alcohol and unlimited f food. 
for a period of time but the way they do it in Dubai is a mental I think there's so many brunches and it's just so much fun uh, it's a lot of drinking your champagne glass is never empty and it's just it's, it's fun if you can try and go to a brunch do try and go but it is really difficult if you don't know anyone there to try and book it yourself because you do have to make a booking but you can definitely look it up and make a call and book in but some of them can range from like a hundred dollars to like three hundred four hundred dollars for the thing and you just get a different experience from each one I wonder if I've got the we went to this crazy one and like they had food from all parts of the world they had live entertainment and it was just amazing we had so much fun there I'll see if I do have a picture of it but I don't think I've I don't know I used to kind of vlog my life a bit I like just film stuff on my GoPro when we went traveling and then come back and edit it I do have another channel but it's not like a channel for subscribers it's a channel for sharing my family videos when I do get around to editing them but I've been having so much fun editing makeup stuff I haven't finished off the Dubai trip so that's the thing it's not somewhere that I would go for like a cultural experience it's somewhere where I would go for what is it for some fun and to do some stuff that you've probably never done before and I'm gonna list off some of my favorite things to do in Dubai and I've done a few of these things multiple times because I did that trip when I was single then I went with my boyfriend for a week uh, to because I wanted him to meet my sister <laughs> and then I we went there for we stayed two or three nights on the way to our trip and it just it, oh, man staying there in the middle of those trips made such a big difference the flight from Brisbane to Dubai is eight hours and I think Dubai to London was like 12 or 14 it's nice to break it up because we didn't stop on the way back and oh my god we were we were just zombies and sorry, I've written a little list so I have it here. But one of the first things you should definitely do is do a desert safari that includes the falcons. So falconry is really big in the UAE. It's a huge part of their culture and they do some amazing falcon shows. There is a falcon hospital. I've never been there. My mum and my, my parents have and my sister and they really enjoyed it. They said it was really cool. But what you can do is go on desert safari and they take you out in... What is it? Four wheel drives. They come pick you up wherever you're staying and then they drive you out to the desert. Usually you stop off somewhere first. You can actually get some cheap traditional clothing there. Usually they'll try and sell you a headdress. I've got so many of them <laughs> now. And then they usually have an experience there. Your guide's usually able to hook you up and they have quad bikes and you can go quad biking in the sand. I've done that twice and it's, it's amazing. It's so much fun. I forget how much it is, but if you have cat, like if you have, oh god, what is their dollar? I mean, like they, they love US dollar. So if you go there with US dollar, it's super easy to pay things. And like we've even paid, we even paid for our taxi one night with Australian dollars. They, it's like the only place in the world that you could pay with pretty much any currency you want. So the quad bikes, super fun, highly recommend. And it's a fun way to do it. After you do the quad bikes, and you do pay extra to do the quad bikes. After you do the quad bikes, they will take you in the sand dunes, in the full drives. Because we did it as, like, you know, bought two in a tour. We sat in the back, and that is just, it's the worst decision ever, but it, it's pretty funny too. <laughs> so, I guess I can do eyes today. Usually I do my full face, and then I come on camera. It's just horrible in the back. But you get thrown out and stuff, and you don't get to see, like, the the massive like hills that they go down whereas if you're in the front seat you get that full view where they're like tipping and you can see in front of you and it's insane then uh, yeah so you get a big scare you get thrown out in the cars the driver laughs at you you stop off for some pictures and the last time we went uh, a dude with a falcon just rocked up on a quad bike and we got some cool pictures in the sand dunes i think it cost us like ten dollars to take with this falcon <laughs> and it was just amazing it's an experience that you can only really get in Dubai. Like, it, it just wouldn't happen anywhere else. And then they take you out to the safari location. And, uh, like, they have a belly dancer, dancing show. Sometimes they had a falcon at the last one I sent. I did, but we didn't do the falcon show. They have camel rides that you can pay extra to do. And they usually have, like, a barbecue feast that comes out. There's, of course, no alcohol, because that's against their culture. And in Dubai, alcohol can only be served at places that are connected to hotels. It's just really fun and when we were last time the dudes we were with we were like this guy and he was like a heaps good 
but I'll get a hunter. And he managed to get us all put a certain amount of money in and we got private seats and like we got a and it was like a shitty bench. But they came and served the food to us, which was just way easier. And then you can also have shisha there as well. Which if you don't know what shisha is, it's like hookah. It's those big giant things, I'll take a picture, where you can smoke uh, flavoured tobacco through. So you can sit there and watch the show, smoking hooker, if that's what you do. If you don't like hooker, I'm, I'm sorry, it's kind of, it's going to be at the show, so just warning you as well. And then they drive you back and drop you off, but it's like a good, I think it usually goes from like, I feel like it's like from 2pm until 8 or 9pm. And it's super fun, I definitely recommend, and that's like the first thing I recommend to anyone to do. Desert Safari, and if you can get a Falcon show as well, just if you Google online, you'll find one for sure. I look like I washed myself out. Sorry, I've got powder all over my face. That's why I look a bit funny. If you can get one that has a Falcon show, I I haven't done one with a Falcon show. I think the last time I paid for one and it had Falcon show in it, but it was actually just Falcon pictures. Where I got free pictures with a Falcon. And look, I love taking pictures with the Falcons. I've got a lot of them. So I wasn't complaining, but I, I do want to see a Falcon show one day. It's on my dream list of things to do. That is the number one thing I really recommend if you're going to Dubai. And then moving on, I would say the next night, try and go to the Dubai Fountains. Now they are crazy. My lovely friend Annette, who lives in Las Vegas, I remember sending her a picture. She was like, damn, they're huge. And she lives in Las Vegas, which is very well known. Well, in my world, it's well known for... The fountains is at the Belmont. They've got a huge fountain show. The Dubai ones, oh my god, they're amazing. And if you can't afford to go, what I really recommend, because it is it is fun to watch, but if you look up Dubai fountains, and then you can look up, yeah, just look up Dubai fountain show, and then music. I've only ever seen the fountain show with Arabic music. I've never actually seen it with an English song, but they do do it with English songs on occasion. You can catch them on YouTube. But they are just astounding. Like, it's humongous it's free to watch and after I think 6 p.m. it goes every half an hour so you won't miss it and you can get a good spot and it's just super fun it is by the so the Dubai mall there is a lot of malls in Dubai so it gets a bit confusing for my brain yeah so it's just by the Dubai mall which is one of their most famous malls that they have the Dubai mall is just huge and it's it's super fun to walk through there at this like humongous shopping center but everything is so expensive. Last time they've just opened up the fashion district and they had a Fabergé store. Like, you know the Fabergé eggs? They had a fucking store. They also have the world's largest Rolex store. They just have a lot of crazy things inside the mall. So it is really fun to go look around and check it out. Just by the Dubai Fountains is the Burj Khalifa. This is the world's largest, uh, what is it? One of the world's greatest tower and I believe it's the highest tower there is. So I actually have a problem and I love this. So this, <laughs> this is a book of pictures you can buy when you go to the top. Yeah, I really love collecting these kind of pictures. They make me super happy to have. And I love the way that Dubai does them. I don't really know another place that does this. But here I can actually do this without even showing you. This is the Burj Khalifa and here are some other towers in the world. It's got the, Je the John Hancock, the Empire State. I really are. You know, it, it, it's impressive. It's huge. People live in it. It's crazy. So you can go up to the top and you get a picture of the background and this is sort of what it looks like. This is me and my boyfriend the last time we went. And this is a picture of the view you get to see. But during the fountain show it's got heaps of lights on the show on it and it just looks amazing. And this picture you can see and this is some of the fountains. <laughs> Here it is. So the bar is somewhere where I'd love to go see it in per se like the... New Year, because I think it'd be really cool. But I know my sister doesn't stay there for the New Year's. I don't know. She doesn't really seem to like it for that. But the Dubai Mall, the Burj Khalifa. I went to the top that time. I've been there one time. I don't know. Like, we got to the top and I was like, oh, it's a tall building. Like, this isn't as exciting as I thought it was going to be. It is cool to see how it was built. And I am... When I got back, I couldn't stop watching videos on the... Like, how it was constructed. Uh, just because it's just insane and they did it during the global financial crisis the, the history of the building is super cool and how they saw it but you'd be super happy I think for me personally I, I didn't need to go to the top and if there is a building that you should go to the top of it it's the Dubai fountain no the, the Dubai frame which I'll talk about in a bit but anyway those are my favorite things like the Dubai mall is definitely up there and the Burj Khalifa the fountains and desert safari those are the things I would definitely try and do if you ever have the chance to be in Dubai for a couple of days and then I'll talk about, about some other stuff and it just depends what's interested in you what interests you this is just stuff that I really enjoyed doing while I was there
One of my absolute favorite things to do, and I missed out last time, we just didn't have time, and my boyfriend really didn't want to go see Captain Marvel, which is the movie that was there. But at the Mall of the Emirates, which is their most famous mall because it has the ski to buy and the aquarium in it, and it's really cool, that's, that's worth going and having a look and walking around as well. So the, they have a 4D cinema in there. I think I'm like the only person who's ever excited about it, but it is crazy. So it's a, I mean like you've probably seen 3D, but 4D is the seat moves, it rocks, it splashes water at you, you can turn the water off, it punches you in the back during fight scenes, you get jerked forward, it's, it's amazing. And they do the smell thing, it's just insane, I loved it. I've gone to see, I saw Batman vs Superman there, and then I also saw Thor 2. Uh, and last time we missed out on going to it, but that's like one of my top things to do. I love a unique experience like that And that's something that I think I'm pretty sure only exists in Dubai I know on the Gold Coast you can go to Movie World, but they just have kids movies on their 4D screen. So Ski Dubai I chose to do my eye makeup during this Ski Dubai is where they got them ping the penguins Which I have met the penguins there twice now They've got the penguins hanging out and they've also got where you can ski in there. The first time I went with my sister and we uh, we went in and did all the tobogganing and stuff. It does cost like a, a bit of a pretty penny. But you can go in and do the tobogganing and the rides and stuff and it's super fun. I think last time the reason I didn't really want to go in there was because I've just put on weight and I was like I don't want to wear these suits. This is looking crazy. I love it. I'm so entertained. So the first time I went yeah we did all the tobogganing and I went with my sister and we just had like a really fun time in the mall and just messing around in the snow. It's such a unique experience, it's just crazy. And just walking around that mall as well is like a super fun experience. I think it's not as insane as Dubai Mall, but there's still some crazy stuff there. So yeah, so the first time I went, I got to meet the penguin for free. If you, my sister warned me, she was like, what you have to do is like answer the question at the end and they'll let you go in and get your picture for free. And I was like, all right, so I memorized all the facts they said about the penguins. And then when they asked to put your hand up and answer the question, I was like, oh, yes, me. And he was like, yep, yeah, come on. I got to go up to the King Emperor Penguin and got a picture with it. But I was like too scared to touch it. And if you see the picture of me <laughs> touching it, I'm like, eh, in my brain. Um, because I think they were like, kiss it, kiss it, kiss it. Then when I went back, I just, I, I love penguins, by the way. Penguins are one of my favorite animals of all time. And the last time we went back, I made my boyfriend go again. <laughs> and we paid for the penguin experience. So I'll stop this for a second and I'll show you while I have the crazy eyes shadow. There's no penguins. So I have another book. Dubai is the only place I have this many books of penguins from. So these are the king penguins. So when we went last time, they were actually molting. Uh, so we weren't allowed to go near them. And that's why they look a bit dirty. But we got to stand in the back and take pictures like that. Because they have one that's called Mac Fatty. How cute is he? But they did let us meet the Gentoo penguins. These are actually, they're in Australia. But they let these guys come out and they're like little kids and they are just the cutest. Oh my god. We had so much fun. Just, they came up, walked around, you got to touch them. I was just, it was good. The penguin experience is up there for me. Yeah, I just love penguins. I love getting up close to them and stuff like that. And you can tell they really do love the penguins there. And the penguins seemed very well kept for. And it was just amazing getting that close to penguins. I don't know, penguins, penguins, man, they're, a, they're my jam. So I'm gonna go to the side after this. I don't know, it's crazy eyeshadow. And then, so the one that I do actually recommend, and we, own, we this is brand new from, and it, from the previous times I've been there, I think it's only just opened in the last year, but it's a Dubai frame. Super cheap, I think it was only like 20 bucks. And you can go up to, it's just this crazy structure. I'll put a picture of it. And it, it's just a frame. So it's like meant to reflect the old versus the new Dubai. And you can go up the top. And then <laughs> I was freaking out. Because as you walk towards the middle, it goes from opaque to clear. And it's like, it's, it, it, you're high up. So I was very freaked out. But it was really nice. It was a super cheap experience, which is rare in Dubai. But it was just like a fun thing to go do and get a cool view of Dubai. And it's it's a pretty cool thing to see. Afterwards, we went and had some food down at the bottom in the gardens, and it was a really nice. Yeah, the Dubai frame, I definitely recommend it. It's pretty cool to go see. I'm going to assume that 
editing crew is fixing me, hooking me up and putting pictures in this video for you. Then we have the Burj Al Arab. This is the crazy building on that you see like on all the postcards of Dubai. It looks like a sale or something like that. But it's the most expensive hotel ever. I think they rated themselves as seven stars, which isn't a thing. But it does look pretty cool. And like I love watching like little docos on it because it's just it's really fascinating to me how they do it. Yeah, so the Burj Al Arab. To enter the Burj Al Arab, you do need to make a booking. And if you were really keen to go in, like it's going to cost you a pretty penny. Me and my sister did the budget, uh, like $150 each buffet. Which was pretty cool. They like had they made the pasta there for you and like it was pretty insane. But that means you can go walk around a bit and see it. They have the so when you pull up to the thing, you have to say what your booking is and that you've got your booking and then you can go through. And it's cool to go see and like it's just an insane insane. Uh the entire the entirety of the inside is all gold. I'll put a picture of it. But it's not I don't know, like, if you're going to Dubai, it's cool to see it from afar. I wouldn't be that stressed about going to see it up close, but I definitely would recommend going to check out some, like, documentaries on how they built it, because, like, I loved watching that shit. Because they just built it in the middle, like, of the ocean, I think, and then they used tires to catch the ocean wave so it doesn't hit it as much. But it's a pretty cool thing to see, and it is cool to go inside and see it, but you've, you're going to have to pay for the experience. And, look, you can get that on YouTube, so... I waste your dollars. Then we have the so the Atlantis water park and this is the one I get asked about the most I think. It's like an all-day adventure and it is the best water park I've ever been to. If you have a GoPro you can take it with you or you can rent a GoPro there. I think you might just need an SD card but if you do go definitely like look up look it up. And they will let you take your GoPro on all the rides. It's crazy. I have so much footage <laughs> that's like terrible. But they let us go on the rides. And I was so mad when I came back and went to and the Gold Coast where went wild. And like all the parks here. And they were like, no, you can't use your camera on everything. And went wild. They said to me, oh, it's privacy. You can't use it for privacy. And I was like, I've just come from Dubai. I was allowed to use it everywhere there. You think they'd care more about privacy than you guys. <laughs> anyway. You can use your GoPro on all the rides. You can take it. They just, the dudes on the thing will tell you how to hold it so that you don't like hopefully injure yourself because they have some insane, like some of the most insane water park slides you can go on. And the worst was, cause like I said, last time I put weight on between and like I felt how much faster I was going. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not doing this. So the first time I went on the ride that's called the Poseidon, I refused to go on it this time. Cause I was like, fuck no. Nah. Um, and the Poseidon is one of those ones where you go, like, down like shoot. So you stand there, you have your arms crossed, your legs crossed, and then they count down, and then you just go plummeting. I've got footage. Um, my sister did it too, and, like, I've got footage of her doing it, and it's just so funny. And then there is... Oh, I forget what it's called. Oh, I forgot to show you. I'll show you this one. I didn't notice how this one. And this is from Ski Dubai. Oh, yes! This is me meeting my penguin. I would have just shown you this picture, but I do have it, like, here. This is me being like I'm touching a damn penguin. Sorry, I didn't realize that was in the path. Alright, I'll have to look it up. So they have the oh, there's the slide that goes down through the aquarium. And you see it, like you see it on like all the things where it's like, oh my god, you go down. There's one where you go fast and there's one where you go slow. When you're going it's scary though, because when you sit, you pretty much your like legs are at a 90 degree angle. They feel like, and they just tell you to like go, and you <laughs> out you go. So last time I went on that one, and I was like, that's the one that put me off going the Poseidon again because I was like, I'm I'm not, I'm going way too fast for my liking. But you get to sort of zoom through and like say you did it, but you don't really get to see like the aquarium. But there's the one next to it where you can sit in like a uh, inflatable. You just got to drag it to the top, and then you can sit in the inflatable and go down and you can do two I think two person or one person for that and that's really cool because you get down there and then you get to the bottom and then you are in the uh and then you can kind of float in the aquarium and it's pretty cool the um yeah so it's super fun and the lazy river is like my favorite and this is the one I'll show you oh let me quickly do this 
So the lazy river. This is like the best lazy river. I'll see what show I'll show you. So this is the first time I went. So this is the park in the picture they give you. Sorry, my I just set it right down. Oh, that just didn't fall the light. Sorry, since my ring light was in the way. But here is me and my sister going down the lazy river. We just had so much fun going around this thing. It was fantastic. And then this is where you can see that I put on weight. This is me and my boyfriend, and we've got the ride that I was just talking about in the back there. And that is like the slide. Yeah, that's the slide that goes through the aquarium. If you see it. But yeah, there is us chilling in the lazy river. We've got some cool pictures. And then the lazy river again. <laughs> this is just terrible. I'm showing this to you because you're my friends. Please don't judge me. Anyway. Oh. I keep dropping things. I lost that brush I was just using before because I got excited. And next to it has the, so next to the water park, you can go in and I would recommend doing this if you do want to go and see, like if aquariums are like your jam, it's worth going to see this one. Um, and you can buy like your jewel ticket. So we went into the Lost Chambers Aquarium and it's just well set out. It's laid out. It's quite small. They've got a giant groper in it, which is cool to see, but I mean... It's just fun. I think it doesn't cost that much extra. Like if you're, you're already in Dubai, you're already having a fun time, it, spending the money on that's probably not going to make a huge difference. So the Lost Chambers Aquarium, worth checking out, especially if you really like aquariums, but if you missed out on it, no big deal. And then you can sort of go to, is it the Palm Resort? The Atlantis Resort, which is like a, it's a crazy one too. Me and my sister, when we finished our day, we were like, oh my God, I'm so tired. So we walked over to the hotel and we hanged out in the, like back area and just had a co well, we had espresso martinis and just loved it up then so I talked about brunch and I talked about that hair though one of my favorite things to do when I am in Dubai is to check out the makeup because it's crazy oh I should talk about global village one of the things if you do have a bit of time in Dubai is going to global village so my sister had never been to global village but one of my so I did um I was a leader in girl guides which is like um scouts maybe for a little bit last year because I was just like feeling a bit lonely but one of the girl's mums she heard we're going to Dubai and she was like oh my god you have to go to Global Village and my sister was like what like maybe she's like yeah I've heard it's all right like you know and we went and it was so much fun because it's just seeing all the locals have like a great time and it's such a cool layout of stuff there's so much different food you do sort of have to get a bit of a way to go there and it's definitely fun so Global Village is definitely worth checking out. It's got a great, like, it's just a crazy thing they built where it's like each country is represented. Very cool. Now let's wipe that powder off. I'm sure that's probably been annoying, annoying someone. And then, what do I recommend? So, Global Village, and then I was going to say, yeah. So, last time we went to the Sooks and we went to the Gold Sook, which is cool. I'm just going to fix this purple up a bit. It's just like a little patchy on the outer. So, the gold took is really cool. There's heaps of diamond rings. The spice took I was gonna be thought was gonna be bigger. And then when we were driving there, the dude said, "Oh, you should go check out the knife sook." I was like, "Knife sook? I'm like, is this like a sook full of knives?" And sorry, a sook is like a little shop area. I don't really know how to explain it, but like a lots of different shops in the same theme. I was gonna try this shade with my finger and see if it's got. I mean, it's got a little bit more there. So. He said knife sook and I'm like, oh my god, is this like a sook full of knives? Like Anthony, like my boyfriend is going to be so happy to see all these knives. So we got there and then like I was Googling like knife sook. And I was like, what? Knife sook? And then we were walking down and it just like got dodgier and dodgier and dodgier. And then I realized it was knife sook. Neef sook? Knee, N-A-I-F. Um, I don't recommend knife sook for anyone. But the diamond section is cool to see but it's like if you're not going to buy it it's not really worth it and you're going to get hassled by people wanting to sell you stuff. Oh and why they sell fake purses? So there is a place in Dubai called Karama and this is the Karama markets and that's where they sell all the fake like Louis Vuitton and fake Gucci slides and all this sort of stuff. They actually can't display it and they get raided really frequently so they'll come up to you and then they'll lead you somewhere. <laughs> The first time I went, I bought like a cheap Michael Kors bag and then I realized I spent the same as what a Michael Kors bag is back here on sale. <laughs> and then I spent like 150 Australian. I was like, and then I was like, oh, this shit ain't worth it. But last time we went, my mom really wanted to go. So oh yeah, she, she, was on, she, she came when me and my boyfriend went over. I forgot about that. So she, we went to the Karama market and my sister was like, I'm not going near Karama again. It's a nightmare. And she's right. <laughs> Don't go there. 
So the last time we met, my mum was super keen. So we let these dudes lead us down this like dodgy alleyways. They switched out dudes as we were walking along. So like they would swap us out and then they took us up and we went up to like five levels. And then we finally got into like this tiny little room. We just had all these fake bags and stuff. We actually didn't end up buying anything because I think we'd sort of come to the conclusion that like, oh, it's still expensive. What's the point? So it, it's interesting to go, but it's like, it's not really worth it. And buying fake stuff... I don't know. I'm like a bit over it in my life now. I think it's nicer to own like one real nice staple designer thing than it is to buy heaps of fake stuff so that you can portray like a fake image. Not that I have any shade against anyone who does that because like do do what makes you happy. Crown market, super fun. Oh, I forgot even bronze. Terrible. It's funny to go, but it's like super intense. Like you will get hassled because they know that you're there to buy stuff and they know you're there to buy fake stuff. And they'll be like, oh, I did buy like a cute fake Fendi bag, which I never use anymore because it's not practical. They will come up and hassle you. It's just a guarantee. And they like expect you to buy stuff and they expect you to spend a lot of money. So, yeah. I think that's like most of like what I've done in Dubai, which I think is quite a bit really. But if you do have any extra questions about anything about Dubai, let me know. I will say that like staying there is super expensive. Doing anything there is just like expensive. You're going to be paying a fortune. But I've never had better like customer service. Like at the hotels, it's amazing. They come up and greet you. It's just lovely. I would make sure to make, that you don't stay in Sharjah. Yeah, make sure you don't stay in Sharjah, which is S H A. Uh, J A H. You're just not gonna have that much fun. Stay in a nice hotel and it will be super fun. I feel like we do need a little bit of liner for this look. Oh, well, let's put the lip on while I'm here. I'm gonna check on. I'm, I'm gonna put on full panic lipstick from Pat McGrath. So I think that's most of like the things that I can think of to share about with you about Dubai, which is like a fair bit when we think about it. But it is pretty cool. It's worth going to just for a little bit. I will warn you that if you... It is a very conservative... It is a very conservative Muslim country and you actually can't go there. I wouldn't... I wouldn't recommend going if you're trans or openly gay. You can, I definitely think I saw couples that were gay who were there. And for me and my boyfriend, like, we weren't married at the time. But I just wore my ring on my wedding finger and I, we got no questions staying in the same hotel together and stuff like that. So it's sort of like as long as you're not open about it, you're fine. And then, oh, I forget, everyone always asks about the conservative side, so I do this. So if you're in Dubai Mall and stuff, they ask that you're covered up below your, below your knees and like above and your shoulders are covered. And it's more like to do with the family aspect of being at the mall. If you're at the beach, which, so to go to any of the Dubai beaches, that most of them are private, so you have to pay money, but to go to the beach, you can wear a bikini and stuff like that, you're totally fine. It's very well catered to the Western tourist, but they are not open-minded. And there's definitely some crazy interesting stuff you can see or hear about if you look at it. And I remember my friend Kiri was saying about the the Lost Princess of Dubai, and that's a pretty interesting story about what's going on there. There's definitely some underhanded stuff that happens in Dubai, but I'm mean, I'm not a political country. I'm not. I'm not a political. I'm not politically minded. Um, I am yeah, just not politically minded at all. So I'm the worst at talking about any of that crap, crap stuff. Uh, it's super fun to go see it, and it's just like yeah, this is the stuff I've enjoyed doing. So let me know if you've been to Dubai or if you've like watched any Dubai documentaries. If you're going planning a trip there like, and you want like some suggestions. I feel like I've talked about pretty much everything I would suggest doing. But the biggest thing I'd say is just expect it to be expensive. And it's definitely big on tipping culture. But you get such good service so it's hard not to. Like you know. I felt like it was more worthwhile. And that's where we struggled a bit more. When we went to the European countries. And we're like, do we tip? Because this, this service wasn't that good. Like, so I don't know. And I don't know what's happened to audio on this video. I'm just going to give up now. We're just going to have basic bitch audio. Oh, I nearly forgot my brows. How funny is it to like have your face fully done like this and you've forgotten to do your brows. And my precisely pencil died the other day. Which I'm a bit sad about. 
And I have so many other brow products, so I'm forcing myself to use them before I buy a new one. Anyway, let me know what you think about this sort of chatty Dubai kind of, like, you know, these kind of videos. I'm more than happy to do them, and I'm sure I could think of different places to talk about if you are interested in that sort of thing. I thought this was just like a fun way to sit down, do my makeup, share a bit of my trip with you guys. And it gives me a reason to use some of the makeup that I haven't, you know, like a bit of a shop your stash situation too. Because I just don't think, I mean, I just didn't feel like sitting down and doing like a full trying my sugar peel collection. Eyeshadow look. I will say that they worked really nicely. They were really good and they blended nicely. The shimmer's really nice. I don't know, it's better than I thought from my first initial swatch. So I hope you like sat down, had a cup of tea, coffee with me. I'm gonna go have another coffee right now. <laughs> and watch someone else's video. So let me know what you thought. Head yeah, down just so it looks a bit more. Ooh. Let me know what you think of today's look. Sure, I I'll just zoom you in. Hello. This is what we did. I mean really until the gradient looks. Mmm. I feel like the way I cut my crease kind of let that down. That purple probably isn't the most amazing. I mean, if I did, I could go fix it, but I'm sick of fixing eyeshadows at the moment. Anyway, well, so that has been my trip, some pictures and some stuff that happened. I hope you enjoyed coming along for a little ride with me. Let me know if there's something you'd like to see me do again. I really appreciate it. Mm.